Our first step, we are doing a, we are checking the cab. So you'll be asked to check the cab inspection, which comes the door in it. Then we have to read the schedule one to the examiner. So cab, occupant compartment door fails to open. That is a minor defect. If we have a minor defect, we get to call the owner, write on logbook, and we can drive the truck. Any cab or sleeper door fails to close securely. That is a major defect. If we have a major defect, we get to call the owner, write on logbook, and we cannot drive the truck. So we check the driver's side door. Now we have to check uh, the passenger side door. You open the door, make sure the door is properly attached with the vehicle. There's no defect in it, okay? And then you make sure it locks properly, okay? And it, it unlocks properly from outside. Now we have to check it from inside. So now we have to check it from inside the door. There's no damage to it. Door locks properly from inside and unlocks properly from inside, okay? Then we have to read the schedule one, okay? We have to tell the examiner about the defects, right? So occupant compartment door fails to open. That is a minor defect. If we have a minor defect, we got to call the owner, write on logbook, and we can still drive the truck. Any cab or sleeper door fails to close securely, that will be a major defect. If we have a major defect, we have to call our owner, and we have to note on our logbook, and we cannot drive the truck. Okay, let's go to the next step. So next we have uh, mirrors, right? Uh, mirrors and glasses. So from outside, we have to make sure the mirror frame is tight and secure. Mirror is properly attached with the vehicle. And we have to make sure that all the glasses, there's no cracks or no damages and view is clear. On that side, we have a curbside mirror. So we will check the curbside mirror. There's no crack, no damage in it and view is clear in it, okay? Then we'll move on to next mirror. So mirror frame, there's no crack, no damage. It is properly attached with the vehicle. We have to look at the glass, no cracks, no damage, and view is clear, okay? Then we'll move on to next mirror. So mirror frame, there's no cracks, no damages to it. It's securely attached with the vehicle, okay? And a glass, there's no crack, no damage, and a view is clear in it. Now we'll move on to next glass. So we have to check a mirror frame. Mirror frame, there's no crack, no damage to it. It's properly attached with the vehicle. So you gotta check the glasses. There's no crack, no damage in it and view is clear, right? Then we have to read the schedule one. So now we have to read uh, glasses and mirrors, the defects, required mirror or window glass fails to provide the required view to the driver as a result of being cracked, broken, damaged, missing or maladjusted. The required mirror or glass has broken or damaged attachment onto vehicle body. These are the minor defect. If we have a minor defect, we have to call our owner write on logbook and we can drive the truck. There's no major defect of it. Okay, let's move on to next step. So next we have a fuel system. Okay, so we have to check the cap. Fuel tank cap is tight and secure. We have to check the straps. So tank straps are tight and secure. There's no crack or damage in it. Okay, the tank is properly attached with the vehicle. Okay, and tank, there's no cracks or damages in it. And we have to look underneath. There's no diesel leak under the tank, okay? Now we'll move on forward, check underneath the engine. So then we have to check underneath the engine if there's any diesel leak or not, okay? So there's no diesel leak under the engine. Then we move on to next uh, step, okay? Right, so then you have to check this tank, okay? Fuel cap, tight, uh, cap is tight and secure. The straps of the tank, they are tight and secure. There's no cracks or damages in it. So tank is properly attached with the frame tank has no cracks, no damages, okay? Then you have to look, there's no diesel leak under the tank, okay? Now we have to read the major and minor for this. So now we have to read the major and minor for fuel system. Missing fuel tank cap, that is a minor defect. If we have a minor defect, we gotta call our owner, write on logbook, and we can drive the truck. Insecure fuel tank, dripping fuel leak, that is a major defect. If we have a major defect, we have to call our owner, write on logbook, and we cannot drive the truck. All right, let's move on to next step. So now we are doing in-cab inspection. 
So first of all, we have to start the truck and check the gauges. Let's see the first one. Engine oil gauge is working. Temperature gauge is working. RPM gauge is working. Speedometer we can check on the road. Fuel gauge is working. Both air pressure gauges are working and pressure is around 110 PSI. There's no major warning sign in the dashboard except parking brake and seat belt sign is gone. Okay, let's uh, do the next one. So next we are checking a steering wheel. Okay, so we have to make sure there's no extra free play in a steering wheel. Okay, it's less than 10 degree. Let it turn it left. Steering responds well to the left, it means it's responding properly. Then you turn it right all the way. Steering turns right properly. Okay, and you gotta pull it up, make sure it's attached properly to the system. Okay, next. Okay. So next we'll check the driver's seat. We have to make sure it is properly attached with the vehicle. Okay, then we have to make sure that it moves back and forth. It goes up and down, right? So move it. So it's going back and forth. Then it's going up. It's going down properly and it stays in locked position, right? Then we have to check the driver's seat belt. Okay, seat belt, there's no cuts, no damages in it. Seat belt locks properly. Okay, so try to pull it. Seat belt locks properly. Seat belt unlocks properly. Our tether belt is properly attached with the vehicle. Okay, so we have to make sure it's properly attached. Okay. Then we'll do the next one. So we'll check the window glasses. The window glass on the left side and on right side. There's no cracks or damages and view is clear, okay? And then we have to check the rear glass. Rear glass, no crack, no damage. View is clear and it's properly attached with the vehicle. So rear view mirrors um, on the left side and the rear view mirrors on the right side. There's no crack, no damages and view is clear. Okay, and they are adjusted properly according to the driver position. Okay, now we'll check the convex mirrors. So the convex mirrors on the hood, both side, there's no crack, no damages, view is clear, and they are properly adjusted. So windshield, it's properly attached with the vehicle. There's no cracks, no damages, and view is clear. So we have to check the wipers now, okay. So we check the wiper washers, right? Wiper blades, no cracks, no damages, okay? And wiper blade and washer fluid is working properly. It's cleaning the windshield properly, giving us a clear view, okay? And then we'll check the controls here. The speed one is in the front, is working. Speed two at the back, working. Speed three is working, okay? So wiper is working properly. So now we'll check uh, heater defroster is working or not. So switch to heat mode, switch to windshield mode here. And then we have to put our hand on the vent, on the windshield. And then we have to start our fan with the speed one. When you feel the air coming, speed one is working. Switch to speed two and feel speed two is working. Switch to speed number three. Speed number three is working. Switch to four. Speed number four is working. So windshield mode is working. Now we will check the face mode. So we gotta switch the mode to our face mode so we can feel the heat on the heat, uh, face mode. Okay, the air is coming, now heat, uh, the face mode is working. Now we'll switch it to leg mode. Straight down here and we have to feel underneath our foot, the air is coming, so that means uh, foot mode is working too. So we are checking low air warning device. Okay. So our pressure is 110 PSI in both the gauges, right? Now we will drop the pressure to check low air warning. Now we will check low air warning device. Okay. So our pressure is 110 PSI in both gauges. Now we will pump the brake pedal and drop the pressure to check low air warning. Low air warning is 
running is working at 55 PSI, which is good. If it works below 55, we kill the factory. Now we have to read the schedule one. So lawyer warning system fails or system is activated, which is a major defect. If we have a major defect in our vehicle, we cannot drive the truck. We have to call our owner, report on logbook, and we cannot drive. Now we are checking air pressure buildup time. Okay, our pressure is 110 psi. We will drop it to 80 psi or below by pumping the brake pedal. pressure below 80 when it gets to 85 we will start the timer so it's 85 now so we will stop the timer when it gets to 100 so it's a hundred Okay, it took only 21 seconds to build up from 85 to 100, so which is good. Now we will uh, read the schedule one for the defects. So slow air pressure build up rate, which is a minor defect. If we have a minor defect on our vehicle, we have to write on logbook, report to our owner, and we can drive the truck. So now we are checking audible air leak or air loss in the system. So for that purpose, we have to release the parking brakes. Push them in both. Okay. Now we gotta make sure that uh, we have enough pressure. So we had the pressure more than 100. Now we had the uh, engine shut off, ignition on. Now we will press the brake pedal and hold it there. First, we will listen outside if we hear any air leak or not. There's no air leak outside. Now we will start the timer to check air loss. For one minute, we have to um, keep our brake pedal hold there in applied position. And we have to look at the gauge. Are we losing any pressure or not? So we have a tractor trailer. We are allowed to have a maximum 4 PSI of air loss. It should be less than that within a minute so one minute is over now so we didn't lose any pressure so air loss is less than 4 psi in one minute okay now we have to read the schedule one audible air leak which is a minor defect if we have a minor defect we'll call our owner write a logbook and we can drive the truck air loss rate exceeds the prescribed limit which is a major defect if we have a major defect in our vehicle we have to call our owner write on logbook and we cannot drive the truck so now we are checking tractor protection valve for that we have to make sure our parking brake is in released position and trailer supply valve it's out pulled out okay and then we have to make sure that our pressure is 100 psi or above now we will go down and remove the service line from the trailer okay. so we are pulling the service line out and we'll keep it close to the cab okay now we have to go inside press the brake pedal and listen for leak in it so now we will press the brake pedal and we have to listen for any air leak in the service line. No air leak in the service line. That means tractor protection valve is working properly. If there's a leak, protection valve is defective. An operative towing vehicle tractor protection system, which is a major defect. If we have a major defect in our vehicle, we have to write on logbook, call our owner, and we cannot drive the truck. So now we are uh, doing a push rod stroke measurement. For that, we have to release our parking brake. And we have to make sure the pressure. 
So we have to make sure that pressure is 90 to 100 psi and we have to go outside. Check our brake chamber size. Okay, we need a caliper for that and a measuring tape. Okay, so we have to measure the outside ring of the brake chamber with the caliper. So you gotta put it on both sides. Okay, so it's touching on both ends. So now we have to measure this opening. We can measure it in, mil in a centimeter and we can convert it into millimeters, right? So let's see. So outside diameter we have about 17.5 centimeters. If we convert into millimeters times 10, that becomes 175 millimeter. So 175 millimeter means the brake chamber size we have is a 20 because it's close to 172 and then at the back side we have a tag here that tells us this is 20 L size okay now we have to put, um, put the mark on a uh, push rod here it's right here okay so we have already permanent mark there now we have to apply the service brake and make sure we have a pressure 90 to 100 again now we have to press and hold the brake pedal with the help of uh, brake buddy we have push it there there Pull it up. Okay. We gotta bring the strain wheel down. So, so the service brake is applied now, and we have to make sure the pressure. The service brake was applied, and the pressure we have is 9200. Okay. So this is our brake buddy, right? I'll tell you how to use it. So push this button on top, and you can pull it down and you know pull it up, right? And then with these two handles, you can tie it in the steering wheel here. Okay. Manji. So that's how it's applied. So now we will measure the push rod stroke. Okay. So you, we are measuring it from the brake chamber to the uh, mark we have there, right? So let's put our finger there, and we can bring it out. You can see. It. So. So we measure the push rod stroke uh, about a 32 millimeters. Okay, uh, for this brake chamber, we have adjustment limit of 51. So our brake is in adjustment limit. If it comes out more than 51, then our brake is out of adjustment, which is a defect. Okay. Now we have to read the schedule one. Push rod stroke of any brake exceeds the adjustment limit, which is a major defect. If we have a major defect, we gotta call our owner white on logbook and we cannot drive the truck so we'll read the schedule one driver seat is damaged or fails to remain in set position that is a minor defect if we have a minor defect we have to call our owner right on logbook and we can drive the truck seat belt or teeth belt is insecure missing or malfunctions which is a major defect if we have a major defect we have to call our owner right on logbook and we cannot drive the truck. Required mirror or window glass fails to provide the required view to the driver as a result of being cracked, broken, damaged, missing or maladjusted. Required mirror or glass has broken or damaged attachment onto vehicle body. These are the minor defect. If we have a minor defect, we will call our owner, write on logbook and we can drive the truck. There is no major defect for glasses and mirrors. So we'll. Uh, read the major minor control or system failure which is a minor defect if we have a minor defect we have to call our owner write on logbook and we can drive the truck defroster fails to provide unobstructed view through the windshield which is a major defect if we have a major defect in our truck we have to call our owner write on logbook and we cannot drive the truck so we'll read the schedule one Steering wheel lash free play is greater than normal, which is a minor defect. If we have a minor defect, we have to call our owner, write on logbook, and we can drive the truck. Steering wheel is insecure or does not respond normally. Steering wheel lash free play exceeds prescribed limit, which is a major defect. If we have a major defect, we gotta call our owner, write on logbook, and we cannot drive the truck. So now we will read the schedule one control or system malfunctions wiper blade is damaged missing or fails to adequately clear driver's field of vision these are the minor defect 
if we have a minor defect, we have to call our owner, write on logbook, and we can drive the truck. When use of wiper or washer is required, wiper or washer fails to adequately clear driver's field of vision in area swept by driver's side wiper. This is major defect. If we have a major defect, we have to call our owner, write on logbook, and we cannot drive the truck. Now you are going to check the tire. So we'll check the tire pressure first. Tire pressure is good. Tire tread, there's no cuts, no damages in it. Okay. Tire tread, depth is good, which is more than 3 mm for the front axle. For the rear axle, it's 1.5. Okay. Uh, there's no exposed cords in it. Okay. So we'll check the outside wall. There's no cuts, no damages in it. Okay. No exposed cords in it. Inside the tire wall, there's no cuts, no damages, no exposed cords. Tire is not touching any component. So we don't hear any air leak from the tire. Now we'll check the leak. We gotta feel it. Okay. So I don't feel any air leak in the tread area. I don't feel any air leak outside the wall. I don't feel any air leak inside the wall. The air valve is tight and secure, no leak in it. Now we'll read the defects. Tire, damaged tire or sidewall of the tire. Tire leaking if leak cannot be heard. That's a minor defect. If we have a minor defect, we have to write on a logbook, call our owner, and we can drive the truck. Flat tire, tire leaking if leak can be felt or heard. Tire tread depth is less than the wear limit. Tire is in contact with another tire or any vehicle component other than mud flap. Tire is marked not for highway use. Tire has exposed cords in the tread or outer side wall area. These are the major defect we have. If we got a major defect in our vehicle, we cannot drive. We have to write on our logbook and uh, we have to uh, call the owner. Now we check the wheel. Outside wheel, there's no cuts. No damages, all wheel fasteners, they're present, tight and secure, no missing fastener. Hub cap is tight and secure, hub cap fasteners, tight and secure, no missing fastener, no loose fastener. Oil level is at a maximum. Inside the wheel, there's no cracks, no damages, wheel is not touching any component, all the attaching parts are tight and secure. Hub seal, no leakage. So there's no evidence of, of any hub, wheel or bearing failure. So we'll read the major and minus. Okay. Uh, hub oil below minimum level when fitted with the side glass, leaking wheel seal. That's a minor defect. If we have a minor defect, we have to call our owner, write on logbook and we can drive the truck. Wheel has loose, missing or ineffective fasteners, damaged, cracked or broken wheel rim or attaching parts, evidence of imminent wheel hub or bearing failure. These are the major defect. We have to call our owner, write on logbook, and we cannot drive the truck. We'll check the suspension system, leaf spring. There's no cracks, no damages in it, okay? It's not uh, shifted out of place or touching any other component. Leaf spring hanger, properly attached with the vehicle. There's no cracks, no damages. Leaf spring fasteners. They're tight and secure, no missing fastener. So U-bolt is tight and secure. Both U-bolts are tight and secure. Shock absorber, there's no cracks, no damage, no leakage in it. It's properly attached, tight and secure. All fasteners for the shock absorber, they are tight and secure. Shock absorber fastener, it's tight and secure on top. Airbag, it's properly attached with the vehicle. It's properly inflated. There's no cuts, no bruises, no patch on it. We don't hear any air leak in it. It's secure. Now we'll read uh, suspension system defects. Air leak in air suspension, a broken spring leaf. Suspension fastener is loose, missing or broken. That's a minor defects we have. If we got a minor defect, we have to call our owner, write down logbook, and we can drive the truck. Damaged, patched, cut, bruised, cracked to braid or deflated airbag or insecurely mounted airbag. 
cracked or broken main spring leaf or more than one broken spring leaf in any spring assembly, part of spring leaf or suspension is missing, shifted, out of place or is in contact with another vehicle component, loose your bolt. These are the major defects we have. If we have a major defect, we got to call our owner, write on logbook and we cannot drive the truck. So we'll check frame and cargo body. Frame, there's no cracks, no damages. Okay, it's tight and secure. All fasteners are in place. Okay, no missing fastener. So frame, there's no bend, no damage. Frame, there's no bend, no damage under the cab. Frame, there's no cracks, no damages in it. Okay, fasteners are present. Cross member, there's no cracks, no damages in it. It's present and secure. Frame, there's no cracks, no damages in it. Cross member is tight and secure. Cross member fasteners are present and they are tight and secure. There's no cracks, no damages in it. All fasteners are present. Frame, there's no cracks, no bend, no damage in it. Cross member is tight and secure. Cross member fasteners, they are tight and secure. Front side of the cargo body, there's no major damage to it. It's good. Left side of the cargo body, there's no major damage to it. It's good. No cracks in it. No holes. So all cross members are present, there is no damage, no sagging frame members, okay. Cross member rivets, they are tight and secure, no damage. All the cross members are present, no sagging, no collapsing, all the cross members are tight and secure, their fasteners are tight and secure. Cargo door. There's no band, no damage in it, right? Cargo door is securely locked. Cargo body, there's no cracks, no damages, no big holes in it, right? The cross member rivets, they are tight and secure, no missing one. So tractor frame, on the right side, there's no bends, no damages, no cracks in it. So tractor frame, there's no cracks, no damages in it, right? Uh, frame members, their uh, fasteners are tight and secure. There's no band, no damage to it. Frame. There's no cracks, no bends, no damage in it. All the fasteners are present and secure. Okay, we'll uh, read the defects. Frame and cargo body. Damaged frame or cargo body, that's a minor defect. If we have a minor defect, we'll call our owner, write on logbook and we can still drive the truck. Visibly shifted, cracked, collapsing or sagging frame member. That's a major defect. If we have a major defect, we have to call our owner write on logbook and we cannot drive the truck. We'll check coupler mounting. So coupler mounting plate, there's no crack, no damages. Okay. All the fasteners, they are tight and secure. No missing fasteners. Now we will check on the right side. So coupler mounting, there's no cracks, no damage. All the fasteners are present and they are tight and secure. No missing fastener. Now we will read the defect. Coupler or mounting has loose or missing fastener, which is a minor defect. If we have a minor defect, we will call our owner, write on logbook, and we can still drive the truck. Now we will check coupler locking mechanism. So fifth wheel lock handle is in locked position. There is no gap between fifth wheel and a trailer. Apron plate and fifth wheel, there's no cracks, no damages in them. Now we have to check visually if the jaw is locked. So the jaw is locked, you can point it uh, with your finger to the examiner and tell him the jaw is locked properly. So we have to do the tug test before we read the schedule one. Okay, so tug test is done. We are uh, reading the schedule one for defects. Coupling or locking mechanism is damaged or fails to lock. 
which is a major defect. If we have a major defect, we have to call our owner, write on logbook, and we cannot drive the truck. So now the next test, we have coupling security to check. So we are checking free play in coupling. For that purpose, we're gonna release the tractor parking brakes. And we're gonna pull the tractor forward and stop there, right? And then we have to come down. Then we have to mark the coupling, um, fifth wheel and apron plate. Then we're gonna get inside, push it back, stop it there, and then we're gonna check the marks, right? If they moved or not for free play. Okay, let's do it. All right, now we are going to release the tractor parking brake. Do not release the trailer, okay? Put in a drive, pull it forward, and then apply the tractor parking brake only. Do not touch the trailer brakes. Okay, now we gotta go down. So fifth wheel and apron plate, there is no gap in between them. Apron plate and fifth wheel, there's no cracks, no damages. Now we're gonna mark the fifth wheel and apron plate. Okay, with that, we're gonna put a mark up there. So we got the marks here. Now we're gonna push the tractor back and then we'll check the marks for movement. So now we're gonna release the tractor brake, okay? And we're gonna push it back and stop it there. And then we have to go outside and check the marks, right? Now we have moved the truck back. Now we'll go outside and check the markings. Now we will check the mark if it's, they are at the same point or not. So it feels they are at the same point. Okay, there's no movement in it. So there's no free plane coupling system. Coupling is secure. Uh, we are allowed half an inch uh, of the free play in it. So we'll check the defect, we'll read it. Coupler is insecure or movement exceeds prescribed limit which is a major defect. If we have a major defect, we will call our owner, write on logbook, and we cannot drive the truck. Now we are doing coupling and uncoupling procedure. We have to make sure that our vehicle is secure. Make sure your parking brakes are on, okay? And then we have to check the wheel chocks if they are applied or not. So we have to make sure that our wheels are chalked properly from both sides, okay? So our vehicle is secure. So we have to make sure that our surface is hard and even. Now we will lower the landing legs. So we have two different speeds in the gears, low and high. We gotta see if they are going in a low or high. So it's high speed. So make sure both your legs are coming down. Both legs are touching the ground and our handle is secure. So now we will disconnect the lines. So you pull them up to disconnect both. For electrical, we have a lock here. So you have to pick up the lock and then you put your hand there and pull out, okay? Now we have to secure them. Now we're gonna hang them up here. Okay, so our lines are secure now. Okay, now we're gonna unlock the jaw from the fifth wheel. We gotta pull this handle out. Okay, the handle is out. So jaw is open. We can see the kingpin. So now we will pull the fifth wheel out from the trailer.
Our fifth wheel is out. So our fifth wheel is fully out. Okay. All the trailer weight is on the landing legs. They are holding the trailer weight and trailer is standing even. Now we have to move the truck forward, which way the examiner will tell you. Okay. So turn the ignition on and wait for a couple of seconds because the truck has to do self-check and then we can start the truck. So now we put our four-way flashers on and then we have to come out to do the inspection on coupling system, right? First of all, we will check our glad hands. There's no cuts, no damages on them. O-rings are in good shape, okay? Let me check electrical plug. So electrical plug, there's no cuts, no damage, no rust or dust inside the uh, pin, okay? So we'll check all the lines. There's no cracks or damages in it. They are hanging properly with the tractor and they are properly attached with the tractor. Now we're gonna secure them back. Now we will check the coupling system. So fifth wheel lock handle is fully out. Coupler mounting plate, there's no cracks, no damages in it. All the fasteners are present. They're tight and secure. There's no missing fastener. Yeah. Now we will gotta go at the back. So our four-way flashers are working and uh, our jaw lock is fully open. So mounting plate, there's no cracks, no damage. All the fasteners are present and they are tight and secure. No missing fastener. Check the fifth wheel is tilting backward, it got enough grease on it, okay? So now we're gonna start coupling, okay? So we have to align tractor trailer properly and we gotta make sure that our fifth wheel touches the trailer when we stop it, okay? Let's do it. So now we have to do the inspection on the trailer, okay? So fifth uh, trailer glad hands, they are tight and secure, okay? There's no damage to it. O-rings are in good shape. We'll check the electrical plug. All seven pins are present. There's no rust or dust inside the plug, okay? Now we will check uh, the uh, coupling system. So we have to check the coupling system here, apron plate. There's no cracks, no damages to the apron plate, kingpin. There's no bend, no damage in a uh, kingpin, okay? And they got enough grease on it. Kingpin is in the line with the trailer, okay? And there's no gap between trailer and apron plate. And do the tug test, okay? Lock handle is properly in, so it's in a locked position. There's no gap between apron plate and a fifth wheel. Okay, now we will check the jaw lock if they're closed. So our jaw is fully locked behind the king pin. So now we have to connect the lines. Okay, so pick it up. We gotta connect it when we connect. We gotta put O ring to O ring like that, and then we push it down. 
Okay. So they are also color matched. Blue connects to the blue, red connects to the red, right? So again, O-ring to O-ring, okay? And you push it down, okay? Now we have to connect the electrical plug, okay? So it has a lock up here. The lock goes up, goes in, and we have a lock here. It must lock it properly, okay? So lines are connected properly. So now we will pick up the landing legs, okay? So the handle goes on top of this rod here, okay? It has two speeds, one low, one high, right? So it depends, some has a high outside, some of them has high inside, right? So we gotta try to raise the landing legs and see if they're coming fast or slow. So they're coming fast, so make sure both legs are coming up. So we have to raise the legs all the way up. And then you can turn back and hang it properly, okay? So handle is secure, both legs are up. Now we're gonna send supply to the trailer, push the red valve in. And we have to check for any air leak and couplings, right? Supply line. So we send the supply line, to, uh, supply to the trailer, right? And we're here, there's no air leak in, trailer supply line. And we have a pressure on uh, around 100 PSI. Now we have to check service line. So now we will check the air leak and service line. For that, we have to press the brake pedal and hold it there. And we have to listen for a leak in a service line. No air leak in a service line. That means our coupling is complete. There's no leakage in it. Okay, we can apply the brakes for the trailer. When we press the brake pedal, we are listening for air leak in service line. That is blue line we have, okay? Red line is for supply. No air leak in it, so it's good. Coupling is complete. So pull the trailer supply valve out to complete our coupling and coupling.